Welcome back to Nerf Rewired. Today we're going to be rewiring a nemesis. I realize I haven't done one of these episodes in forever, and I needed to rewire my nemesis for to use as a potential secondary uh, or backup primary, really, for an event I'm going to this weekend. Um, I am uh, hoping to use Tear, but uh, in the event that Tear suffers some kind of a catastrophic failure, this will be my backup. I unfortunately won't have time to paint it, but I'll do that some other day. So we're going to be rewiring it to use 3S LiPo, uh, which the nice thing about the Nemesis and any of the rival blasters is you don't have to replace the motors to do that. The, the stock motors are already plenty beefy enough to handle a 3S LiPo, but the switches and the wires, not so much. Uh, so I am going to replace them, and thankfully, out of darts, in a uh, when I ordered some stuff in the past, sent me a pair of his switch plates. He designed his own switch plates that uh, aren't quite drop in. There's a little bit of shell work you have to do, um, but they mount in and hold your Omron switches beautifully in place so you don't have to hot glue them in uh, and make a big old mess of it. And then he has little pieces that go on to the actual triggers to make the connection even um, stronger and sure. So these are available on his Etsy page. I will have the link in the description and uh, they're really quite fabulous. They come with the switches, I believe as well as the plates. At least mine came with the switches. I assume yours will too. Anyway, we're gonna take this thing apart. It should be a fairly straightforward rewire, which we will go into as we do it. Now, the first thing I'm taking off are the boards that are on here, as we're not gonna want them because they will hamper the use of Lipo. And the same with the one on the pusher and conveyor belt motor. Now let's take a look at these switch placements. So I mentioned that there is some dremeling that has to be done, but not a whole lot. You just need to figure out, okay, switch needs to go here and it needs to swing from there to there. Don't take off more than you need to. So that's where that one goes. The, uh, addi the addition to the trigger just slides in straight that way. It does unfortunately mean you can no longer use the mechanical lock, so you will prob I will definitely be putting in uh, an electric lock. So positive will first go to the uh, rev switch and then it will go to the pusher switch so that you can't uh, activate the pusher without having it revving because you wouldn't want to do that because it'll jam the blaster. Or might. These motors are probably powerful enough they could handle it, but uh, why put the extra stress on it when it's uh, easier to wire it that way anyway? So, that is that in place. And you will want to, you know, glue this in place. Though that, that switch is in there real good. I'm just going to put a dollop of hot glue right in the middle. To hold this switch in place. Now let's take a look at this one. This one's gonna go in up here somewhere and does appear that it's gonna take a little bit more dremeling. If I assume that's where it goes. Here's another random bit of advice. If you don't want to lose your trigger switches and other such, a little bit of hot glue right at the base will keep it from springing on you. Not too much because you don't want it to hamper its ability to compress and all, but just right at the base, a little bit, we'll keep it from wandering off. All right. Now I assume that this just hooks on right there somehow. Yep. All right. Lovely, lovely. Need to dribble out quite a bit on this one. Okay. So you have to dribble out a whole swath right through here. And then this plate will sit right there and hold your switch. 
means I'm probably going to need to cut a swath off the other side too, which is going to be the unpleasant part, trying to figure out where exactly it needs to go, but it uh, shouldn't actually be that big. Yeah, I like it. All right, so, bloop in some hot glue. All right, now we can start the wiring. <clears throat> I have a, a very nice pre-soldered XD60 connector that will be the basis for the wiring. Uh, we will be starting here on the normally closed of our rev for our, our pusher switch so that we can do motor braking. And then the positive will go to the rev switch and then the rev switch will go to the normally open as well as to the flywheels. Negative will also of course go from here to the negative on both motors. And then finally the com on the uh, pusher switch will go to the um, pusher motor. <clears throat> and that is really all we have to do. walk you through it. You can also look at the wiring diagrams I have on my Facebook page. Uh, they explain it pretty well. We have negative coming from the battery going to the normally closed on the firing switch. Negative then also goes from there to the pusher motor as well as the flywheel motors. Now the reason we have it on the normally closed is so that when the uh, trigger is not pulled then uh, negative is going to calm which is going to the other side of the pusher motor and it creates motor braking. So the motor comes to a halt uh, pretty immediately. So you don't have, you know, the conveyor belt dribbling the last couple of balls into the flywheels that have already started revving down. We then have positive coming from the battery going to the normally open on our rev switch. Com then goes uh, to the normally open on our trigger switch. So when the trigger is pulled, so when the rev trigger is pulled and the trigger is pulled, positive then comes out of com, which is why my com is purple, because it is a mix of the red, and on, on my diagram, the negative is black, or is blue, but here it's black, because that's what color the wire I grabbed. Um, anyway, then the purple is positive, and the pusher motor will go. Positive also then goes from the com to the flywheels. And so now, when we pull the rev switch, it revs. When we pull rev and fire, it fires. So we have successfully rewired this nemesis. Uh, we will still need to dremel a little bit on the other side, I believe, in order to clear that switch. Revs, fires, works on a, a 3S LiPo, a uh, battery tray has more than enough room for whatever, I mean you could probably get a, a 500 milliamp one in there if you really wanted to, uh, I've just got a, a 1.3 in here at the moment because my bigger ones are in tier. Um, this, most of the safeties have been removed, like the, the switch for the magazine, that has been removed. Um, which I think is really the only one this has. Uh, the uh, safety does still work. Interestingly, if you, uh, because of the, the way the triggers are aligned, if you just pull the main trigger, it revs altogether. So 
That's neat. You can rev without firing, or you can just pull the trigger and it'll do both. And you can see the motor braking at work. The, the uh, conveyor belt comes to a complete stop pretty much immediately. Whereas the flywheels rev down normally. So that worked properly. Yeah, questions, comments, concerns down in the description. Let me know what else you'd like to see me rewire. And thank you guys for watching.